Hello guys, so welcome back to our lecture 20. So in this lecture, we're gonna solve the same example that we solved last time, which is a sequence detector. So detect two or more ones in a sequence, but now using D flip-flop. And why is this? I'm gonna show you that that the, the type of flip-flop might affect the complexity of the final output. This is number one. Number two, actually this, you know, uh, by intuition, without any design process, without true state, state table or state diagram, you can, you know, build, you know, this circuit, you know, just by thinking about it carefully, okay? But of course, this is not our way. Our way is a, you know, official way. Start by the state diagram, the state table, build the equations, implement the circuit, the design process, of course, okay? So again, we have a melee circuit, uh, sequence detector, two or, uh, two or more bits. Two or more ones in a, in a series or in a, in a sequence, okay? But now using D flip-flop. Now the question is, does that really change the state diagram? Of course not. The state diagram is just an abstract idea. You just, you know, get your idea out of your head and put it in a piece of paper, okay? So the number of states, you know, the transition between states, all that are the same. So we're gonna have the same, state diagram. So we have two states, one is called zero, one is called one. If we are in zero and we receive the zero, the output will be zero and we're gonna stay in the same state. But if we are in state zero and we received one, the output will be zero and we're gonna go to the next state one. If we are in one and we received one, that means we received two or more ones. So that's why the, the output will be one and you're gonna stay in the same state. Finally, if we are in one and we received, yes, we received, uh, sorry, yeah, we received the zero, that means we receive, we, we reset basically. So no one's detected at that particular bit. So that means we received no zeros, no ones, I'm sorry. And the output will be, uh, I'm sorry, this is, yeah, zero. Okay. Now let's build the state table. But knowing that it's a D flip flop this time, not D flip flop. So we have the X, we have uh, the, the input, the present state Q, next state Q plus, the output Y, and the D flip flop input. D flip flop input D. So X and Q can take four combinations, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. First, if the current state is zero and the input is zero, we're gonna stay in the same state and the output will be zero. If the state is one and the input X is zero, we're gonna go back to state zero and the output will be zero. If we are in state zero, but we received one, we're gonna go to the next state, which is one, and the output will be state zero. But if we are in state one and we received one, that means we're gonna stay in the same state, one, and the output will be one. Now for the D. For the D, it's really easy, you know. Just look and, at Q plus and the copy and paste it here. Because it's, you know, it's a transparent latch. Whenever the clock comes, the edge of the clock comes, D will be transferred to Q plus. We have Q plus, so that means it must be equal to D, or D must be equal to these to these values in the Q plus column. So here we have zero, zero, one, one. Now we can read it in that way. When the clock uh, uh, edge come and D is zero, Q plus will be zero, and so on. Okay. That's, you know, the, the advantage of using deep flip flow. It makes your analysis really easy, really easy. Okay, good. Let's now uh, build the, equa uh, the equation using Carnot maps. Y will not change. It will stay equal to X and it was Q. Why? Because this column doesn't change it, doesn't change, this column doesn't change. Y column doesn't change as well, but this guy changed it now, it's a D. So let's do it. 
So X and here is Q, zero, zero, one, one. Combine these as a like one group. So D is equal to X, basically. Let's build the circuit. Here is a circuit. Really, extremely simple one, basically. X, here is D, of course, here is Q. And Y is just X and Q. That's it. It's really very simple. And that's why it's a very, it's a very intuitive that we can get this circuit without even going in all such steps, a state diagram and a state table. Okay, let's see how, let's see how. Look, I'm saying that this guy, Y, will be one if uh, two, we received two or more ones, okay? So if we have a one here uh, in Q, Q is equal to one, the current state is one. That means at least, at least I received one. Okay, at least I received one. Then when, when X is equal to one, so the previous, I, I, I said when I have Q is equal to one, that means I received one. At least we received one, 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 okay? So the previous input was one and the current input now is one. So Y will be equal to one, look at the end again, right? If the next input was also one, still Y will be one. Okay, and by the way, when the ages come and this guy, was, was, this all, will also change it to one. So yeah. So that's basically the intuitive way of thinking about it. That, yeah, we need just a memory. That's that's how we think about it. We just, we just need a memory that copies the previous input. Then when the, when the second input comes, when the next input comes, we can compare the last and the, in the current one to check if they are both ones, then why is one? So we need, we need and the gate. This is how you think about it. Okay, guys, that's basically, why using deep flip flow is really intuitive, okay? And also will make your your your, uh, your design easier. So in the previous example, when we use the T, why doesn't it change to all, all the time X uh, and it was Q, but T was Q, X or X. So we have here X or, So we saved one XO, okay? We saved one XO. So let's check the correct solution. Of course, this is correct, but just, you know. So again, the, here is, you know, the, but again, I, I switched X and the Q, but you must receive the same equations. So it doesn't matter. Changing the order doesn't matter. And of course, you, sh you should get the same circuit. Okay, guys, that's basically the same problem using melee, I'm sorry, using deep flip flop and the state melee circuit, okay? So now we, we, we see that the change of the flip flop or the type of the flip flop might affect the complexity of the circuit, okay? That's number one. Number two, we need to know now what if we designed the same circuit using more concept or more approach in which the output here does not depend on the input. Look, it's dependent here, right? It's dependent on the state and the input. So in, in more approach, there will be this combinational logic here have no input from the input of the, of the it's, all its input come from the flip-flops. That, that looks easier and that looks, you know, uh, will, uh, will reduce the complexity, but it's not. And we're gonna see in the next video when we use more circuit or more approach, okay? We're gonna get more, uh, uh, a more complex circuit than this one, okay? And there is a reason for this. I'm gonna explore also next video. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next video, bye-bye.